<laughs> all right, well, speaking of the Red Sox, one of our favorites of all time is uh, finally available on the Harbor One hotline, Jonathan Papelbon, who uh, we assumed, I think, was uh, out tending to his chickens earlier or something yep. like that. Mm-hmm. Pap, good morning. What's up? What's up? Yeah, I had a few loose chickens this morning. What's up, team? Um, are they are they back in the coop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're back in there, laying their eggs, doing what they need to do. You know what I mean. So we're all is good. All is good. I'm getting um, jacked up today, though, baby. Opening day. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the all-time great days in the city, and and you know that from your time here. And I have, I don't know if you had much chance to pay attention during spring training or not. But what do you, uh, how, how do you feel about the pitch clock, and and how would you have felt about it if it were there when when uh, when 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 you were pitching? I tell you what, you know, now that I'm all, uh, signed with Nesson, I think I paid more attention to baseball than when I actually played, man. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord, these rules, I, I, I had to listen to like an hour-long spiel on the rules the other day, but, you know, uh, way back when I played, um, I specifically remember Theo telling me, don't worry about this uh, hurry-up-and-pace uh, procedures that it all started beginning, and then I started getting fined, and then Theo was like, all right, we got to change it. So, But anyway... I think that it's a good idea. Honestly, I do. Um, our goal is to have have more fan entertainment, and so um, I think it's going to help. Now, are there? Go- is it going to go by perfectly? Hell no. This is not a perfect. It, it's not going to just you know magically be the the, the solution to everything. I, I, the one thing that concerns me, it, which a lot of us did not see in spring training, is. When the manager wants to challenge, he's got to throw his hands up. The umpire starts at 15-second clock and says, okay, you got 15 seconds to get down in the tunnel and figure out whether y'all want to challenge this or not. Well, my concern is you got guys like Buck Showalter who this guy might be throwing up his hands on every single play <laughs> seeing if I need to challenge, you know. So there's going to be some hiccups, but I think over uh, as a whole it's going to be good for baseball. I do. But as a, I mean, how difficult? Because you did it, we didn't. But how, how difficult is it from a from a pitching perspective to adjust whatever advantage you think you get when it when it comes to time between pitches? Well, look, the advantage is going to be with the hitters. That's that's a fact. Uh, you know, pitchers now have to t- they have to keep up with so much more the base. Oh. <laughs> Uh, uh, so how many cell towers are there in Mississippi? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, out on a farm. Y'all got too, me? Oh, 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 is he back? Y'all got no. me? Yeah, oh, yeah there yeah. we think of. Yeah, so you know the advantage is going to be to the hitters. There's no question about that because the pitchers now have to worry about how many you know step offs they had. The bases are bigger, um, you know, stuff like that. So they have to pay attention to a whole lot more now. There's no question about that. Instead of focusing on the job and the task at hand, get the hitters out. Um, but I think the pitchers will be able to adjust. Uh, I think you saw Max Scherzer do a few little things playing that cat and mouse game this spring. Um, you know, it, for the guys that are coming in the minor leagues and, and, and going to play this year in the big leagues, it shouldn't be that hard. But the guys like your Scherzers, your Verlanders, who've been pitching in the league for a long time, um, your Chris Sales, you know, those guys, there, there's going to be an adjustment. Um, so, you know, it, only time will tell, but I'm very interested in to see how things go. Well, Pap, when, when, when you look at this Red Sox team, I think the biggest thing for players is trying to be able to understand, especially these newer players and these younger players, is to deal with uh, the pressure when it comes to winning in Boston, especially off of a season like they had last year. I don't know if you had an opportunity to talk to any of these guys or maybe give them a message of like, okay, how do you handle the pressure of playing in a place like Boston that demands uh, for you to be a championship contender every single year? Yeah, man. I, to be honest with you, I don't talk to these cats no more. I mean, that, like, that's like, like, ask Wiggy, man. You think Wiggy goes and talks to all the new guys up in the league? No, he, he, he does it like, look, they don't want to listen to me anyway. I'm an old has-been guy, you know? It. <laughs> But here's the fact of the matter is when you play in these types of cities like Boston, like New York, 
there comes expectations. And when you play in these cities, if you don't want to answer to the media, if you don't want to do certain things in the public eye, well, guess what? You ain't going to last long. That's just how it is. And, you know, uh, I know a lot of people doubt the Red Sox this year, um, but this year to me is um, a year where, you know what, they've got everything to prove and nothing to lose. Right? Everybody thinks they're going to suck already, right? I mean, that's pretty much what I've been hearing. Yeah. All right. So what they got to go out and do is prove everybody out, out wrong and go take the field with the attitude. We got nothing to lose. Everybody thinks we're going to lose and use that to your advantage. Now, it could go one of two ways, yeah. But um, to me, these guys, man, they go out there this year, lay it all on the line and you know, I think we have a sneaky lineup. I don't think it, you know, on paper it just, um, you know, comes across as one of the best lineups. But I think we got a sneaky lineup. And, um, you know, there's going to be uh, – Chris Sale's going to have to, you know, lead the team again and get back to the Chris Sale of old. That's a fact. Um, maybe stay off a bike, you know, for the season. <laughs> you know, we don't need to ride any bikes. It's two things like that. But – um, there's going to have to be some certain leadership that comes to the table this year in order to take where they need to be. Well, listen, we're kind of up against the clock. Yeah. I, I wish we had all day with you, but... Um, new I'm so, segment, Ask I, Wiggy. Ask Wiggy, yeah, Ask segment. Wiggy, new segment, Ask Wiggy. And Jonathan Papelbon, as always, a pleasure. We will be watching you on Nesson all season long, all right? All right, man, sounds good. Y'all have fun today, and uh, y'all try not to drink too many beers. But where y'all at? At Casket Flaggins today? Where y'all yeah, at? Yeah, we're going to head over to Casket Flaggins. Did you have a favorite place down here? Was it Casket Flaggins or Baseball Tavern? Yeah, Casket Flaggins was one. I used to pull a few bottles of liquor there, you know. So, yeah, y'all have fun, man. Pour <laughs> out right. liquor for me. All right. All right. All right. There he is. All right, Jonathan Applebaum.